Hello and welcome to this very special Stand in the Gap program. I'm Sam Rohr and I'm going to be joined again as normal by Pastor Isaac Crockett. Now normally in this program we seek to identify a major transcending cultural issue or problem that's confronting our nation and through identifying and applying biblical principles we provide solutions that if they are embraced will guarantee a fixing of the solution or of the issue. Now today, however, our focus will be a little different as we give thanks to God and demonstrate the principle of giving glory to God for what He's done. On today's program, we'll highlight some key events and blessings that God has done for and through the ministry of the American Pastors Network. Thanks be to God, APN is now celebrating our fifth anniversary as a ministry dedicated to these three primary goals the advancing of biblical authority, salvation through Christ alone, and encouraging and equipping both the pulpits and the pews in America to boldly stand in the gap for truth. These three goals are also the three commitments upon which pastors who align with the American Pastors Network agree and communicate from their pulpits. As our name implies, our emphasis is on re-engaged and powerful pulpits Yet our ministry is not only to pastors, but through the pulpits and through our ministries in radio and TV and print to boldly communicate God's truth and a biblical worldview to God's people in the pews so that they can be better equipped to be the salt and light in our culture that God expects. What God's done with APN in such a short time is miraculous. And today we want to share just a few highlights with you and praise God together with you. We believe that there's no better way to glorify His name and at the same time answer questions that many of you, our radio listeners and TV viewers, frequently ask about APN, like how we started, what we're doing, and with God's leading, how you could walk with us into the next five years should the Lord tarry. To help us celebrate God's blessing, I've asked Dr. Gary Dull, who is the first person that I contacted once God laid the vision of APN in my heart a number of years ago. Gary's very special to this ministry and to me personally because of his heart for the Lord, his love for the Word of God, and his long walk of faithfulness doing the Lord's work. Gary is a founding board member of APN, the executive director of the Pennsylvania Pastors Network. He's co-host of our Stand in the Gap Today daily news analysis radio program, and he's also senior pastor of the Faith Baptist Church in Altoona, Pennsylvania, as well as President of Way of Truth Ministries. But before I introduce Gary officially and to highlight just a few of the many things God has done for us, let me play just a short video that graphically depicts the very heart of the American Pastors Network, our vision for the pulpits of America, and what it would be like if pastors from across America would once again stand up and boldly proclaim the full counsel of God. I solemnly urge you in the presence of God in Christ Jesus. Preach the Word of God. Be about your work. Don't stop, even if the time seems unfavorable. Patiently correct. Rebuke sin with authority. And encourage your people with solid Bible teaching. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and preach the whole counsel of God and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. For over 2,000 years, pastors have carried the light of the gospel through opposition, persecution, and every flaming arrow of the enemy. The preaching of God's word has transformed lives, brought great revival, and shaped the values and conscience of our nation. But sadly, now more than ever, our nation is experiencing a period of spiritual darkness 
The light of truth has grown dim in the hearts of many because it is no longer being preached from some pulpits. We have been told that we must remain mute on issues relating to civil government. We've been taught to fear man more than God. We've hidden the light of the gospel instead of being a city on a hill. But what would happen if churches threw off the shackles of fear and boldly stood for truth? If 100,000 pastors around the nation joined together and committed to preaching God's word no matter the consequence? Pastors who are unaffected by changing times and the opinions of men, but are empowered by God's enduring word. What would happen if America's pulpits became aflame with the preaching of righteousness? The great darkness from rejecting God's standards would be expelled, the prayers of God's people heard, our nation healed, and God's blessings restored. The time has come to stand. In just a moment, we'll be back and we'll talk about what you saw in that clip, plus share things that God has done for APN in these past five years. You won't want to miss this. Truth, flexible or permanent? The Bible, ancient history or powerfully relevant? Culture, a reflection of enlightenment or warning signs? The pastor, commentator, or frontline combatant. Every day, American Pastors Network speaks to these questions where and when they matter. With hundreds of affiliate radio stations nationwide, a website and mobile app screening today's headlines through the twin lenses of the Bible and the Constitution, educating, informing, equipping, this is the American Pastors Network. The time is now to stand in the gap for truth. Welcome back to Stand in the Gap. And this is our very special program today where we're celebrating the fifth anniversary of the American Pastors Network and really giving God the glory and the thanks for what He has done. Gary, I want to now go to you and... Uh, I introduced you on the other side of the program. Really glad you could be with us today. So thanks for being here. Good to be here, Sam. Uh, Gary, as I said earlier, you played a very, very important part in this ministry many years ago when uh, you were the first one that I had called after God had laid the vision on my heart. And you replied with a very, very special thing. You said, you know what, Sam? I would be honored to. I've been praying for this for 15 right. years. Now that's an incredible thing. I'd just like you to just take a, just a minute or two here and lay out, if you could, why it is so important. You've been a pastor for 40 years, Gary. 45. 45, okay. <laughs> and I mean, honestly, not just because you're here, you are a pastor and a shepherd, like few that I have seen. Um, you know the value of the pulpit and how it ties into what God is doing with us. Could you just lay out just briefly, why is it so important in God's eyes to have a bold pulpit and for pulpits to be functioning as God intends. Yes, Sam, and again, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, I remember those early days and uh, I remember how we talked and sort of had some dreams and visions as what God would do as we started out with the Pennsylvania Pastors Network and then God developed it and now we have the American Pastors Network. But the whole concept of what we dreamed about in those days and what we see coming into fruition today is to empower and enable pastors to preach the whole counsel of God from the pulpit. My concern today, Sam, is that a lot of pastors have gotten to the point of preaching what I refer to as cupcake sermons. Those are sermons that look good, maybe taste good, but they have very little nourishment. And I think that that's one of the reasons why the culture is the way that it is today. When you look back in the history of our nation, you find that what really made our nation great was the fact that the pulpits were strong. The preachers dealt with the issues that were taking place in the nation from the perspective of the Word of God through the biblical worldview. But in the past several generations, I think we've lost that. 
So often today we find that the pulpits are there where the preachers are giving to the people what the people want to hear mm -hmm. rather than what they need to hear and consequently the whole counsel of God is not being proclaimed. If the church is going to be what it's to be and if we are going to have the impact for Christ that we should have, the pulpit must be dedicated to the mm -hmm. preaching and the teaching of the Word of God totally. Isaac, let me turn to you here right now. Uh, you're a younger pastor. You've been in the ministry 10 years or so, approximately, and as a pastor. And uh, your uh, engagement with the American Pastors Network came after what Gary just mm -hmm. said and what we've started. Share just briefly from your perspective, what has the ministry and the emphasis of the American Pastors Network, and as our video even laid out there, what has it done for you personally? And then perhaps what has it meant to your congregation? Yes, uh, you know, I, I knew who you were before the Pastors Network started. I remember having your yard signs when you were running for office in our yard. Uh, and I remember when the Pastors Network started was right around the same time that my dad was fighting cancer. And he was my mentor and my father. He was my pastor most of my life. And so he passed away um, shortly after American Pastors Network started. And so really it helped fill a big void in my life. It came at a, a great time that I needed um, help, you know, mentoring and different things. And so I was able to, to uh, find encouragement for myself, networking with other pastors and that accountability that sometimes as a pastor you're, you're looking for, especially a young pastor, you don't want to make mistakes. And for my church, uh, my church, it's, uh, we've kind of almost replanted a church that was already there. But because of that, a lot of new Christians, a lot of people who are first generation, Christ mostly, mostly newer Christians in my congregation. And so, so many different questions from so many different things going on in the culture. And it has given me a toolbox of resources to be able to hand out to them, especially now with all the different media that God has given the American Pastors Network it has just been a wonderful library of resources to point people in my congregation and other people in the community to. It's just, it's been very wonderful. Gary, let me come back to you at this point. Um, uh, I'd like to, if we could, reflect a little bit now on some sp on specific things that God has done. Uh, I read in Psalm 115, 1, it says, Now, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory hmm. for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Let's just do that now for a few minutes. We don't mind as we go through this. Gary, one of the first, our first mission statement we identified was this, to identify, encourage, equip, educate, and network pastors and church members to stand in the gap for truth. Um, just share one primary example of what God laid on our heart and what He's done to help us achieve or try to pursue that goal. Well, one of the things, Sam, that we wanted to do uh, and our goal was to get as many pastors across the nation involved with the American Pastors Network that we possibly could. And so we actually set out to develop a, a number of uh, uh, state chapters. We'd love to see a chapter in every state of the union. And of course, what does that mean? It means we have the opportunity not only to empower, pastor, empower pastors, but to spread throughout the whole nation what our message, what our mission is. And up to date, we have uh, up to 10 different chapters involved, mm -hmm. and, uh, including Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Tennessee, Arkansas, Missouri, Miss, uh, Michigan, Virginia, and then uh, coming on board one of these days will be uh, South Carolina, West Virginia, and Kentucky. And so we are seeing these state chapters grow, and the Lord willing, if the Lord tarries, one of these days we'll have a chapter in every one of the 50 states of the Union. And Gary, then uh, on the video we showed just a few minutes ago, there was a comment about 100,000 pastors. That's 2,000 per state. That's 2,000 per state. That's what that works out to be. And that's yeah. why that number came that way. Yeah. So in any regard, um, that was, uh, that's why that's there. But that is a wonderful thing. Our chapter development, ladies and gentlemen, is something that God has extraordinarily blessed as a way of helping to network pastors who believe the things that we shared in this program earlier. It, it is so neat to see. I mean, this, the, the idea of networking, which has been such a huge help to me personally and to my congregation, but even just in the, the mission statements of APN. And then it, it, the mission statement that you quoted is the kind of the main overreaching one, but then there's kind of the secondary one, and I'm going to read it here, uh, is to be a voice for truth and advocate for pastors in the public square by providing Bible-based and constitutionally consistent analysis and recommendations on matters of public policy, which is 
again, been neat to see happening uh, throughout the ministry. But Sam, could you maybe go uh, tell our viewers and our listeners a little bit about how God has furthered that goal, has really brought what was just a statement into a reality over these years. Absolutely, Isaac. And I, I, that's one of those things where we sat, Gary, you and I and one of our other guys, Dale Arm, Pastor Dale Armstrong, sat in a trailer down in, your, in the woods in southwestern Pennsylvania. We were praying and thinking about how could we communicate the truth more effectively. You're a radio guy. You're a TV guy. I used to be in radio and all. And we, and we said, you know what? We need to be thinking of radio. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to put on the screen here in just a moment just a few things that you can see. Because in 2013, we began what we call now our Stand in the Gap Minute program, just a minute uh, devotional. Uh, we started with three stations in Pennsylvania. That's now on over 350 stations across the country. Uh, in 2014, we were able to begin the Stand in the Gap weekend program and our preaching program. Five stations that started on in Pennsylvania. It now is on over 275 stations. Then the Stand in the Gap Today news analysis program uh, began in 2015 on six stations in Pennsylvania. It's now on over 425 stations nationwide. But then there's also TV that you're watching right now. Just began about six months ago in about over two million households. It is now national in over 27 million households. But God has also given us uh, an ability to, to, to be in print. Uh, our members write uh, editorials, and, uh, and they are often placed in, in such editorial positions as um, Life Z. Now, I'm going to put on the screen just right now just the look of one uh, editorial recently written. The title of it was, Let Us Not Allow Any Old Truth to Reject the Unwavering Truth of the Bible. We did that because we believe in the authority of Scripture and all of the changing norms of today, we saying if we don't get back to God's Word doesn't change, we're in trouble as a nation. We know that. We, that's why we wrote that. Here's another one from the Christian Post. It's about 15 million readers a month. Uh, the title there was Christian Persecution, a reality too close to ignore where we're trying to bring to attention the fact of Christian persecution around the world and how we in America better be aware of what's happening. But you know, more important than these things, these are indications of what God has done to help to communicate the truth uh, in the mission of the American Pastors Network. But more important than that is what it does in your heart, in the heart of our listeners and uh, our viewers. Gary, if you could just write, where, read if you could one really nice note that came in from a woman here in Pennsylvania. Could you do that? That's right, uh, from Melinda in Pennsylvania, and I like this. She says, and I quote, Thank you for what you're doing. I meet many people every week who listen to you and I tell others. We are all in agreement. APN and Stand in the Gap Radio and Television is the miraculous hand of God at work. Think of that. The miraculous hand of God at work. She goes on to say, God bless you and thank you for plowing the Word of God in the people's hearts. Praise God for doing the impossible. And like I said, that's from Melinda in Pennsylvania. That's a tremendous testimony. It is absolutely tremendous. And Isaac, there's one from Wisconsin, the place of your birth. Why don't yes, you read this yeah, one? I grew up in the Midwest. Um, this is a listener and viewer. Uh, she said, we are richly blessed by your program. I tell everyone about it. It is such a great thing to meet br other brothers and sisters and share God's w truth, uh, the truth that we hear on your programs. It is wonderful in these times to know God's word is being heard. Thank you for your Stand in the Gap radio and TV. We now watch on WVCY TV 30 in Milwaukee. That's Barbara from Wisconsin. Isn't that great? And ladies and gentlemen, here's, here's one from a station manager in Pennsylvania, one that, that actually carried our programs in the beginning. He said this, Your Stand in the Gap Today radio program has been rated the number one preferred radio program on our three radio stations by an astounding 87% of the listeners. 87% of the listeners. For two years in a row, he says, our listeners all say, Stand in the Gap helps us to think biblically about the issues of the day. It is our place to go for an analysis of the news that we can trust. He goes on to say, thank God for APN and your three radio programs. Isn't that, isn't that amazing and remarkable? This is what people are saying. This is what makes the difference. And then here's a quote I'm going to read right now from what I'm going to put on the screen. Just very recently, Breitbart News 
uh, picked up a prayer, interviewed, interviewed me, and asked me to pray for America. And they took that prayer, and they transcribed it, and put it on front page Breitbart News across the country, the amazing things I've heard back from that. Here's what one individual said from North Carolina as a result of that. He said, I applaud the leadership of the American Pastors Network. In an age when far too many pastors are becoming ambassadors from the world to the church, get that, ambassadors from the world to the church, rather than ambassadors from Christ's church to the world, a resource such as APN is critically needed. John Wesley's wise observation that in all cases the church is to be judged by the Scripture, not the Scripture by the church, is often forgotten. That was from Dennis in North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, just a brief glimpse of what God has been doing through the ministry of APN. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what you can do, perhaps helping us as we go forward into the next five years, should the Lord tarry. Stand in the Gap is produced and recorded in the studios of WBPH Philadelphia, positively different television. To watch archives of this program, go to WBPH.org. Welcome back to the program. We've been talking with our good friend, Dr. Gary Dahl. Sam and Gary and Dave Kistler are kind of the three musketeers on our American Pastors Network radio program, and we've just been praising God for what He has done over the last five years. And so, you know, Gary, as we look ahead to, Lord willing, if, if God tarries, the next five years, what are some of the things you would have our, our listeners and viewers pray for and look towards for God working through the American Pastors Network? I would just like to encourage our people to pray for their pastors. Pray for pastors across the nation, not only theirs, but pastors across the nation. You know, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 8, we find that the Apostle Paul gives 10 things to Pastor Timothy to fulfill in his ministry. And I think that uh, we ought to ask our people all across America to pray that those 10 things will be what pastors follow in their pulpit ministry. The pulpit will change people's lives. The pulpit will change the nation. But it's all centered around verse 2 where he says, preach the word. Mm -hmm. We need to make certain that pastors preach the Word. And we, through the American Pastors Network, and I would, I would just say to our listeners and our viewers today, pray that pastors will preach the whole counsel of God, will lead their churches into developing the biblical worldview in all things, and then do everything by the enablement of the Spirit of God to impact the culture for Christ. Praying that those things will happen will bring glory to God, and we will appreciate it very much. Mm -hmm. And Sam, as the Lord has put this on your heart, and we looked over the last five years, what do you see for right now, the, the near, you know, near future or even immediate future going on, as well as you know, going into the next few years? What has God put in your heart? For well, that? Isaac, I mean, what God's put in my heart is that what Gary has said, that uh, all of us, you're a part of the American Pastors Network. You represent the new generation coming up. Gary and I are the older generation, but together we have to bridge that gap, and we're leading in that area. I ask for those who are watching to pray with us, as Gary has said, that all of us would remain focused on God's Word that we can continue to do, and that we have freedom in this country to continue to do what we do on this radio program, this t TV program, and on our radio programs and in print. I'm going to have on the screen here just right now for you of some things that you can do and you look at. We really would like you to consider becoming a prayer partner, a devoted, regular prayer partner, and a financial companion. It takes money in order for us to be on the air to do the things that we need. On the program, on the screen right now, you can see we have needs for staffing and infrastructure and program development. We are really feeling burdened of the Lord to be able to take the content that we have on TV and radio and put it into a form that can be delivered in social media to the next generation. Ladies and gentlemen, we must 
reach that next generation. And that is what we, you can help us to do. On the screen, you can see things that you can do, how you can help us, how you can be a part, praying, giving, and what you can do there, and how you can actually contact us and be a part of the next five years of what the American Pastors Network is doing and what God has allowed us to do. We thank you for watching. We really do hope and pray that we can hear from you this week. God bless you.